In front of us here are the three main types of E3D version 6 Bowden type extruders. As I own all three, I wanted to show you guys the differences between them and also the similarities between them. Starting from the left hand side, this is the E3D version 6 full. In the center is the E3D version 6 light. And on the right hand side is the E3D version 6 clone. So the two on the left here are the genuine E3D version 6 iterations of the extruder and we have a sample of a clone on the right over here. So these two are purchased from E3D Online and this one over here from Banggood. Now there are quite a few differences between the full and the light between the E3Ds. To start off with, the heat sinks. You can see on the E3D light, the actual heat break, which connects the heat sink to the heater block, is attached or is a part of the heat sink. Where the E3D full over here has a separate all metal uh, heat, uh, heat break, which attaches the heat sink to the heat block. Also, the E3D light heat sink is actually made of steel, so it's actually quite heavy, while it's the E3D uh, version 6 full over here is made of aluminium and we can measure the differences in weight between them My trusty scales over here. So I'll first be uh, uh, Measuring the aluminium heatsink from the E3D version 6 full kit 18.7 grams now I'll measure the E3D light heatsink which is steel 45.1 grams and sticking with the two genuine E3D extruders, the actual heat blocks are identical. They are exactly the same between them. Whereas on the E3D clone over here, you can see it's a little bit smaller. In fact, that was the original E3D version 6 uh, heat block style. And as I've had my uh, E3D version 6 full for a couple of years now, I had to upgrade to this new heat block. So I still have my old one and it's sitting right here. And if I put that side by side with the clone, you'll see it's exactly the same. So uh, it looks like China hasn't caught up with copying the new heat blocks. So it looks like the clone is fairly similar to the full, where they're using a separate heat break as opposed to an integrated heat break. But there is a difference here. Unfortunately, with this particular clone, the heat break actually has a piece of PTFE tube inside, if I can get that to focus. So that PTFE tube, uh, which enters the, the heat block, unfortunately limits the maximum temperature that this one can reach, which will be about 245 degrees Celsius, which is the maximum that PTFE tube can go to before actually melting, which mind you is the same limitation as the E3D light as the tube enters the heat block. But the actual heat break is identical in its dimensions to the E3D full. So they both share an M7 thread, which screws into the uh, heat sinks and an M6 thread, which screws into the heat blocks. The E3D clone over here is made out of aluminium, so it also shares the, the light weightness of the E3D full. Now the E3D clone heatsink doesn't have the same Bowden uh, attachment, so both the light and the full genuine E3D heatsinks uh, have these Bowden clips, which lock in the tubes to the top of them, whilst the E3D uh, clone has actually a push fitting which screws into the top of the heatsink. Checking the differences between the mounts for the E3D version 6 full and the E3D version 6 clone, I'll just use my digital calipers here to measure the diameter of the mounting point and that's 12 millimeters on the genuine E3D version 6 full and for the clone 12 millimeters there as well. The next thing to check is the actual uh, height difference between the mounting point. So I'll use uh, this other side of the digital calipers to measure that. So we're getting about 5.97 between those two posts. I'll measure the same on the E3D version 6 full. We're getting about the same, 5.94 millimeters. And comparing the height difference between the E3D version 6 full on the left and the clone on the right, it looks like the clone is approximately half to one millimeter taller. 
The outer dimensions of the heat sinks are also identical, so that means the same 30mm fan and fan duct can be clipped onto any of these heat sinks. The nozzles between the E3D Genuine and Clones are also identical in their dimensions and their threads. So just looking how the PTF E-tube enters the heatsink, we can see with the full, the tube goes right through and actually makes contact with the heat break and just sits in it like that. So this PTF E-tube doesn't actually enter the heat zone. And that's why the E3D full over here can reach vastly higher temperatures than either of these two. The E3D version 6 light over here, because the heat break is attached, you'll see the PTFE tube goes right through and actually enters into the heatsink. The E3D clone over here is similar to the E3D full, where the tube goes right through the heatsink but actually makes contact with the heat break. So out of all of these three designs, the E3D light is the one which you should take special care with, as you can pull out the PTFE tube from the heat block. That will then leave quite a large cavity within the heat block. And if this heat block is hot and you still have filament in here, it'll then pull up inside uh, the uh, space left from the PTFE tube and I'm sure that could get quite messy to clean. Ever since I've had my Replicio Prusa i3 3D printer, I've used the E3D version 6 full over here, and it's worked absolutely flawless uh, ever since I've had it. So I highly recommend if you can uh, afford the E3D full, and you want to support the guys that actually designed and created this particular extruder, definitely go for the full kit. However, I know a lot of you out there have purchased the E3D clone, but that doesn't mean that you can't support the guys at E3D online either, because what you can do is you can get rid of the old style heat block that came with your clone and actually utilize the new style heat block. That means you can take advantage of using the silicon uh, socks, which I highly recommend uh, when printing now. I always use these on my 3D printer. Uh, a few benefits with using these. First of all, you're going to get a much better uh, temperature control out of your out of your heater. Uh, you're also not going to radiate heat onto the plastic below, so there's less chance of melting some features from the part that you're printing. Also, if you accidentally touch the, the, the heater while it's on, if you touch the silicon, you're not going to instantly scald yourself. It's going to take a little while before you, you damage your skin. And lastly, uh, because the new heat block accepts these new uh, cartridge style thermistors, there's just more metal area to contact around the heater block. So I'm assuming that we're going to get a better temperature reading rather than using the bead style, the old bead style thermistors, uh, which, which plug, into the old, uh, plug into the old heat block. And of course, the clone accepts the new heat block perfectly fine because the heat break is an exact copy from the E3D6 full. So I'll screw their heat break back in. And this is the heat block from the E3D version 6 Lite. Screw that in as well. And there it is. I think that is the best combination that you can get if you already own a clone. Go out, pick up the block and sock upgrade kit. It comes with a silicon sock, uh, comes with the new style cartridge, and you can take advantage of the better temperature capabilities of a, a larger thermal mass rather than the smaller thermal mass, and also the benefits of the silicon sock. In fact, this particular setup is what I've been using on the second Hypercube uh, that I've built and I showed in the previous video with the Hypercube accessory pack. And this particular setup prints perfectly. I'll go as far as saying it prints just as good as the E3D full over here. So I highly recommend a combination just like this. However, of course, there is still that little piece of PTFE tube inside that heat break, so you're not going to be able to reach the same temperatures as the E3D full. So this is the second Hypercube. I've pulled out the E3D clone plus block and sock upgrade from the uh, extruder holder on the X-carriage. You can see the fan, the cartridge, and the thermistor 
are just hanging there waiting for the uh, extruder to be reinstalled. And here is the other Hypercube sitting in a different room waiting for its E3D version 6 extruder to be reinstalled as well.